What's up guys? Welcome back. So this is my Traxxas Russell 4i4. I have owned this car for over three years and it has now officially been two years since I upgraded it to 6S. So since this car is getting a bit older, I wanted to give it another review just so I can show you guys how it holds up over time, especially with more power, what sort of stuff is going to break and all the upgrades I've done. Now, if you want to see the upgrades in more detail, I'll put a little playlist up in the corner there. But in this video, I'm just going to give you a good overview of them. Yeah, so from the factory, these are definitely solid cars. A lot of people give them hate for the plastic drive shafts, but honestly, I never really had a problem with that. Back when the car was running on 3S, I did break a couple of them, but really, as long as you're not crashing the car into a lot of stuff, they'll do just fine. Now, they're decently fast out of the box, but if you're going to be running it off-road, you're not going to break any records. And honestly, unless you're just going to run speedruns on-road for a little while, you really should not gear it up. The little 3S motors that they put in these things are really good in two-wheel drive cars, but they have to work really hard at these four-wheel drive ones. And in fact, that's actually why I upgraded it to 6S. What happened with this one is it kept on killing bearings somehow. And so what happened is the shaft could wiggle a little bit and then it would just devour spur gears. There was a period of time where each spur gear would last me just minutes. Sometimes not even that. It was super annoying. And when I finally figured out that I had to replace the motor, I decided to upgrade to the 6S one, which would hopefully be better. So the 6S motor I've got is a Hobby Wing Max 8. It's got both the motor and the ESC. And so far it works really, really good. I geared it up to 13 teeth and I've got these huge tires on it, which also gears it up a little bit more. And honestly, I probably could gear it even higher, but I do like having it lower just so I can run it in the grass. I did add this fan though because it sometimes got a bit hot when it was hot outside. And we got the center differential in there as well. The stock slipper clutch will work great on 3S, but for 6S there's really no way to set it tight enough that it won't slip. And of course the little plastic spur will just strip right away. Start on the center diff with some silicone earplugs in it. But yeah, I haven't had any issues with stripping spurs now that I got the new motor. The stock motors aren't bad though, just make sure you take care of them. So on to the other upgrades that it took to handle success. Now it probably won't surprise anyone that the first thing that broke when I put it on 6S was one of the plastic drive shafts. It actually did put up a pretty good fight though. I did tons of speed it did some standing backflips. It only actually broke when I landed a jump badly. But yeah, if you're going up to 6S, you're definitely going to want some new ones. Now, originally, when I upgraded my drive shafts, I got these super cheap ones from a company called GPM. And they actually worked pretty nicely, but they had one issue. So on the drive shafts, it gets really thin in this part right here because it has to in order to fit through a little bearing. But so what would happen is every time I hit a jump badly, they would bend right there. And I'd have to take them off and hammer them back into shape. And it got really annoying, so eventually I upgraded to these Traxxas heavy-duty CV ones. And those are definitely a lot better. Now, just like the GPM ones, they do get really thin in this area. And I've actually had two of them just snap right off. Oh my goodness, I lost the tire. But apart from that, they handle the power really nicely. So I would definitely recommend those if you're going for new drive shafts. The second thing that broke was one of the tires. Pretty much right after I upgraded the drive shafts, one of them just blew right out. Oh! So I originally upgraded them to these Duratrax six-pack tires. These were also a pretty cheap option, but they're a lot bigger than the stock ones, and they got some pretty nice off-road tread. Yeah, these were definitely some good tires. The problem with them was I got them with the wrong size hex and I could never really get them to work right. So eventually I just upgraded the hex to a proper 17 millimeter one and I upgraded the tires to these Proline Badlands MX-28s. And they use some really nice tires. They do great on road and they get tons of grip off road and they actually last a pretty long time. These ones, I should probably swap them out because they're getting a bit old, but I've had them on for at least a year, so that's pretty good. Honestly though, if you get the right size hex, the six packs are actually pretty good tires. They're a lot cheaper, so they're a bit less grippy and they don't last quite as long, but they also cost like half as much, so it's definitely not a bad deal. I think the one thing that I haven't replaced on the driveline is the differentials. In fact, I think they might actually still be factory, but they handle the 6S power really, really well. I haven't had any issues with them. And I'm not 100% sure about this, so don't quote me on it, but the differentials on this look very, very similar to the ones on the original eRevo 1.0. And Traxxas actually calls them Revo Spec on their website. So they might actually be the same differential. And if they are, that would definitely explain it, because it would mean that they're actually designed to run on 6S. Also, that center drive shaft in there, it's pretty scuffed up, but it's handling it pretty nicely. I've had one of those bend after hitting a really bad jump, but that's just one in over three years of ownership. So definitely not bad. Now, another thing that's stock that might actually surprise you is the steering servo. I hear a lot of people complain about these things like not being strong enough or fast enough, but this is the factory servo. It's over three years old and it is still as fast and as strong as ever. Yeah, I mean, really, unless you're trying to break one of these things, it's pretty bulletproof. Same thing for the receiver. Another thing I had to upgrade was all this stuff up in the front. It's so like the suspension arms and the steering blocks and all that stuff. This stuff is reasonably strong on 3S. I did break a couple just by crashing it into stuff, but it's generally pretty tough. But on 6S, they do wear out a lot. I think just because you're plowing over bumps so much faster. Oh, wow. So I upgraded all this stuff up here to RPM. And I don't think I've broken a single one since. Same thing in the back, the suspension arms and the little hubs. Yeah, if you want to bash your car hard, RPM is definitely the way to go. It's not metal, it's still plastic, but it is ridiculously tough. Oh, the one exception to that, I would say, is their wheelie bar mount. The stock rest of the wheelie bar doesn't do nearly enough to stop the car from wheeling. 
So I got the RPM mount, which lets you run the two-wheel drive wheelie bar. But the way it was mounted was really, really weak, and it ended up just tearing right off every time I did a wheelie. Huh. So I upgraded it to this Haas wheelie bar, which just screws right on. And this one is definitely a lot better. <laughs> now obviously, all these extra upgrades add a ton of weight to the car, especially once you get it loaded up with two batteries. And the stock suspension, especially in the back, really was not having it. It would literally ride right on the ground. So what I did was I upgraded to these GTR shocks here. I've got the regular blue rate springs in the front, which I think are the same stiffness as the stock ones. But on the back, I upgraded to these yellow rate E-Revo springs. And that really fixed the problem. The suspension works perfectly now. If you're running the car on 3S, the stock suspension isn't bad. But the GTR shocks are definitely a nice upgrade. And if you want something stiffer, then the E-Revo springs are definitely the way to go. So yeah, that's my 6 SS4404. Thank you all very much for watching. This video is a bit different from usual, so please let me know what you guys thought down in the comments. And if you're new here and you want to see more of this car, then please consider subscribing. But yeah, that is about it for today's video. So don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.